Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today's video is going to be 21 of my most favorite trash to treasure DIYs that we've done together. And for these, we actually used trash and recyclable items to create these DIYs. I hope you enjoy. For the first one, this is my inspiration piece that I saw online. It was actually metal, but I thought we could use cardboard to make something similar. So I like to use the cardboard that comes in, um, comes with the candles that I always tell you about. They have these really cool inserts that are super sturdy pieces of cardboard. And that's what we're going to be using today. And also save the box if you guys um, get these candles. I know a bunch of you guys order them, um, but save the box because it's super sturdy and we're going to be doing something with that in an upcoming uh, DIY video. But for this one, all I did was draw out um, a flower petal and I know the inspiration piece had more of a curved top of the petal, but I wanted to do pointy, so that's what I'm doing. So I just drew one out, cut it out, and then used that as my um, template and then just made a bunch of them and you can make as many as you want depending on how full you want your flower and um, you know, make it any size you want. You could go really big with this one. <laughs> and then when you're done cutting out the petals, you want to bend them. You're giving it kind of like a galvanized metal look. I did a video on this, I think last year or the year before, where I did a birdhouse um, with a galvanized tin roof made from cardboard. And I'll um, link that above if you want to see how I did that. So then after you're done with the bigger size petals, you're going to make two smaller ones. And then do the same thing and just cut them out, make a bunch of them. That's kind of the size difference that mine were. After you do that, you want to do the same thing where you um, give the petals the texture by folding it. Then you're going to want to cut out a circle for the base. And for the metal look, we're going to use some aluminum foil. And um, I like to put the dollar side out, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. <laughs> and then you can use any glue. I prefer Elmer's, but I'm sure you could get away with using um, spray adhesive or glue stick. I'm not sure, I never tried it, but Elmer's works great. It's super cheap. You can get that at the dollar store. And you can just put it all over the foil or just on the um, cardboard and attach it to the foil however you want. Just make sure you have a really good amount of glue. So I did it both on the foil and the leaf. And make sure you get it really good into those grooves because you want it to stick really, really well. And then just do that for all of your leaves or petals. And I have a few of these videos coming up um, soon because I know you guys always really like the Trash to Treasure where I'm actually using recycled items or um, trash or garbage to make these DIYs. So then you want to rub on the foil to bring out the texture from the cardboard. You can use your fingers. I ended up using a sponge worked, um, which worked really, really well. And then just cut them out. Super easy. And then if you want to kind of cover up the edges, you can paint those black or silver to match um, the metal look. And then I just use some hot glue to attach each petal to that um, base circle. I kind of laid them out just to make sure um, that it wasn't going to be messed up when I was gluing it so that there wasn't like a gap. So I always ask, because I love to hear what you guys make, what do you guys make from um, recycled pieces or um, garbage? <laughs> what kind of DIYs do you make? Then after the first layer of the petals are glued down, I just use some black paint 
and I got really good into the grooves because that's where I want the paint to actually sit um, darker than you know the raised um, the raised edges and then I just took a dry sponge and brushed over it you can go either direction I think it just gives it um, you know some worn textured look like old metal would have I'll show you here in a second up close and then I just did that to the rest of the petals and then we are going to add another um, layer of the petals on top also at the end of the video I'm going to have an update on um, our sweet Bella, our dog. A bunch of you have been messaging me and um, sending sweet prayers and love and just asking how she's been doing since her surgery. So I will give you an update on that because um, some things had changed since I talked to you guys last. So then you just attach the next size of petals and you want to attach them so that the petals are a little bit closer to the inside than the first layer of petals and then when you do the smaller petals, you want to um, put them more towards the center than the last layer. So essentially you're making the center smaller each time. But this is what it looks like so far. I think it looks awesome and like really um, rustic metal. You can also bend up the petals like I'm doing here. It just gives it more um, dimension and interest, I think. And you can also paint the back too. Then for the center, I just cut out a smaller circle and um, created those grooves and then also folded up the edges just so it was raised a little bit. And I'm also using this half wood round for the center. And I'm using this copper color just to kind of match the um, inspiration piece. And plus I think it's really really pretty the camera does not show how like shiny metally this looks it's one of my favorite metallic colors and then I just painted the wood around the same color and then attached both of them with hot glue. Oh, let me know in the comments, do you guys like um, shorter videos? I know I've asked this before, but I, I've been getting more um, subscribers, so I kinda wanna know what everybody thinks, but do you guys like shorter videos with less DIYs or longer videos with more DIYs? Oh, and then I just added a little bit of black paint just to get it to kind of match the petals and make it a little bit more rustic. But I'm super happy with how it turned out and with it hanging on the wall, nobody would ever know that it was cardboard. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think of this one. For this next one, I'm using crepe paper, which I've never done before, but I got a whole box from a garage sale that my mom and I went to the other day. And you're also going to need some sort of bottle, like a wine bottle or vodka bottle. <laughs> but when I started opening that crepe paper, I had no idea it was so, like, it was there was so much there. It just kept going and going. <laughs> but anyway, I started cutting um, long strips and then cutting it into thirds because I wanted to braid them and then wrap that around the bottle because I've seen bottles like that at um, thrift stores and stuff but they're kind of expensive so I thought I would make my own and I'm just using hot glue you can use whatever type of glue that works best for you
and then I just used hot glue all the way around I didn't want there to be any gaps without the glue because I didn't want it to like pucker funny or lift up And then I just kept doing the same thing until I hit the bottom of the bottle. But I think it turned out so pretty. I love the color and the texture it added. Let me know what kind of projects you guys use with crepe paper because like I said, I'm new to it. so. I would love to look up some ideas and hear what you guys use it for. For this next one, you're going to use rusty mason jar lids, ones that you wouldn't use for like canning or anything. And I'm also using these wood rounds that I got from a garage sale. They'd probably be better if I used ones that fit better into the lids, which they have them, but I'm just using what I have today. Sorry it's so bright. It was super sunny out so I couldn't get a good angle. But I just love watching spray paint in videos. Am I weird? It's just kind of like watching fire to me or like watching a waterfall. Do you guys like watching spray paint? <laughs> So then as those were drying, I took the wood rounds and um, covered some of them with paint and covered some of them with tape. I can't talk today <laughs> um, because I wanted to do kind of like a more modern look. So I wanted to do like, um, like color blocking, like do some of them this antique uh, wax color, black, white. So I just made sure the tape was pushed down really, really well and started applying the wax. And I found if I started um, the paint out a little bit further from the tape just to get you know the bulk of the wax or the paint off my brush that it didn't bleed under the paint as much. I still got a lot of um, a little bit of bleed through on one of them. You could use a sponge too. That usually helps when I'm doing like stencils and stuff to use a sponge because then it doesn't seem to bleed underneath the tape or the stencil. Then I just took a piece of paper towel and wiped off the excess. Then using some white, I'm going to do the other side that um, I left blank, but I wanted to put more tape down because I can't draw or paint a straight line to save my life. <laughs> do you guys like watching people paint too? Like just regular like um, brush paint? And then I did the same thing with the black. I love these wood round pieces. I got a bunch of um, little like wood crafting pieces in this bag from the garage sale. So I'm excited to use them in something. Do you guys have a good stash of wood rounds before I start doing videos on that? I would like to do videos on stuff that you guys have in your stash. So if you want to leave that in the comments below too, like what is... um. What are like some things that you want to use up in your stash that you'd like to see videos on? And then after the paint dries, make sure to put um, a good like sealant on there. I'm using Mod Podge and since it's you're going to be putting like cups and stuff on there, you want to make sure it's the kind that can get wet like uh, dishwasher safe. Mod Podge or whatever kind of sealant you're used to using. Um, just because you don't want it to bubble up and stuff when you put a wet cup on there. Because we're making coasters. I don't know if I <laughs> said that. 
I'll show you here in a second. <laughs> here they are all dry and the lids are dry too. And I'm just going to attach them. I'm just kind of playing around with how I want them to look. Cause like I said, the wood rounds don't fit perfectly into the lids. So I was just kind of playing around with different ways. You could also um, attach some little felt pieces on the bottom like strips, but I'm attaching mine with um, hot glue. You might want to use something more permanent um, like a Gorilla Glue or maybe, I don't know how well a E6000 would work, but something more permanent. But I thought these were super fun and unique. I don't see a bunch of coasters like this and plus I wanted to use up my little mason jar lids. I have a couple other ideas as well. And I just grabbed another one too. This is one I didn't spray paint, I just left it silver. I have a whole bunch of these rings and you know the, the little ring inserts that have rusted out and I need to get new ones before the canning season. But I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they're really pretty. Let me know what you guys think. For the next one, it's going to be super simple. I'm just using this milk bottle. I just love the shape of it. First, you wanna make sure when you have the lid on that you keep the dots, we're making like a little watering can, keep the dots inside the edge of the mouth of the um, milk jar or whatever kind of jar or bottle you're using. And then just draw the dots where you want the little holes to be and then I'm just, and then I'm just drilling holes where I put my dots. I would probably do bigger holes next time because um, this size, it worked really well because you can kind of um, control how fast the water comes out because you kind of have to squeeze it. I'll show you here in a second. But then for the bottle, I didn't do anything to it. I didn't paint it or anything because I thought it was really pretty just left clear. I did wash it out, but <laughs> but I'll show you how it worked here in a second. Let's see, if you don't squeeze it, it just kind of dribbles out, but if you squeeze it, it's more like a sprinkler or watering can, but super cheap and really cute. For this last one, we are using nail polish bottles. I have a bunch that have gone bad and they've dried up or they're just super goopy. <laughs> so first, I'm just taking the labels off. So I got all the labels off and now we, we're not going to need this. We're just going to need the cute little bottles. And for the most part, they're all like, like this. Okay, sorry about that. My camera died. <laughs> um, but as I was saying, we won't need this. And for the most part, all the nail polishes are dried up. But if they're not, you can go ahead and rinse them out. Um, I don't know if you remember a few years back, I used nail polish lids as like little... Um, knobs or handles so don't throw these away because you can also use them for other projects and some of them are kind of cool some of them are boring but um i'll link that video up above if you want to see how i used that i think it was last year but we have all the labels off so let's go give them a coat of paint so i'm taking three of them and painting them this color it's twig it's the plutonium paint and i love this paint it dries so fast to where like you can pick them up in like 10 minutes <laughs> but i wanted to go with more neutral colors because i thought that would be really pretty for what we're doing we're doing like little mini um vases which would be perfect in a bathroom or if you have an apartment you know, you'll only have like a little tiny windowsill or whatever i just thought they were super cute and then i did try and paint the other two um another plutonium color <laughs> but it was just too sheer so I'm putting down a white coat first 
and then doing the um, color over it. It's more of like a sandy color. I'll look at the name and put it up on the screen because I forgot to show you. <laughs> and with sticking with the <laughs> trash to treasure theme, this is just a piece of our crown molding that we are going to be putting up in our kitchen. This is just a sample piece. So I'm going to use it because it's basically garbage. <laughs> Um, but I liked this side, even though this side is, you know, what you would put up in your kitchen, but nothing would sit on there. So I'm thinking I like this side and it's already like roughed up a little bit and, you know, a little bit vintagey farmhouse. So I'm going to use that as the little stand. And then, and I thought these would be really cute to just put on here as little like vases. I mean, how cute. Don't you just love the colors? <laughs> and then these, I'm sure you guys have all seen these. They are from Walmart. They're one of my favorite faux greenery pieces. And I believe they're 97 cents, but I thought this would be really cute just displayed in, in the little bottles. And you could alternate and do different... Um, you know, little sprigs or greenery. I'm really happy with how these cute little nail polish bottles turned out. I think they would be perfect for a tiny space. For this next DIY, you're just going to use some used old books that you're not using anymore, and they really won't get damaged in this one. So these are books that I've been given or got at thrift stores that were going to be tossed and I'm not going to ruin them, so don't worry about it. Also, the one that looks like leather or suede I made in one of my other videos, I will link that up above. But for this, this is going to be super, super simple. You just combine the books together, like layer them, use some twine and wrap it around nice and tightly and then knot it a couple times so that it's nice and secure. And like I said, this one is super, super simple, but I had to throw it in there because I thought it was adorable. I've seen this for forever, <laughs> so I'm sure you've seen it, but I just thought it was a great idea to repurpose some old books. You use it as a knife holder. I thought that was actually brilliant when I saw it. So I wanted to recreate it and it's so easy to slide the knives in there in and out and it doesn't ruin the books and it looks super cute and vintage. For this next one, you just need an old pair of jeans that you were going to get rid of. And it's awesome because you have a lot of fabric to work with, with working with the legs or you can use the pockets or whatever. You need some sort of stencil and bleach and a little bit of paint. You'll see here in a minute. For this one, I just used a cap full of just straight bleach and used a sponge with the stencil. I'm sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background. <laughs> And I did go back, but I found it bled a little bit if I went back a second time, but this is what it looks like after it was sitting for a while. And then I added a little bit of water just to, I don't know, get it to work its magic with the bleach. And it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to. This is what it looked like after it sat for quite a while. I'm sure if I added more bleach at, you know, in the beginning, it would have lightened a lot easier or a lot more. So I am taking an acrylic marker in white and just filling it in. I don't know if this will stay or I didn't know at the time if it would stay after I washed the jeans, but it ended up looking pretty cute. But it might even be cool if you used maybe a different color marker to outline it. it might, I don't know. There's so many ways you could do this. I'm definitely going to I don't try it out with different colors and different materials and different, you know, strengths of bleach and stuff like that. And in this original video, I used a couple other stencils, so I will link the original video in my description box so you can check that out.
For this one, this one's very simple. It's not necessarily a trash to treasure, but if you're getting rid of the like an old planter because you don't like the color or style of it, try um, you know using different painting techniques or um, texture techniques on the planter just to see if you like it before you get rid of it. But this is one that I had. This is in a video on my home channel. Um, also on my DIY channel, I'll link the original videos in uh, my description box, but I'm just taking some chalk paint and two different color browns and I'm kind of going to be layering them and I just wanted this to have like a terracotta like clay look to it. So I just layered on, oh, this is my favorite chalk paint brush. You guys know that. I think I have it listed in uh, my description box too. But I mixed um, the chalk paint with a little bit of the brown paint and I'm just doing one good coat, not worrying that it coats everything except for um, I wanted that original green color that was poking through after the paint had chipped off. Um, I wanted that covered up really well. And then I'm just taking the darker brown and um, stippling it on with that big brush, that same brush, and then kind of going over it with a little bit of white and then back with the brown until the texture and the look is what I wanted. Super simple. <laughs> For this DIY, we're going to be using a cardboard box that I said we would be using a couple videos ago. This box is pretty sturdy. You can use any box that you have because basically we're just going to be recovering it and making it look really pretty. I'm using this um, drop cloth fabric that I had and also this uh, self-adhesive stuff that usually goes in like cabinets or drawers or whatever. So first I'm just cutting the top off of this box only because once I put the fabric on there, the top wouldn't have a fit correctly. But if you have a box with a nice top, I would keep it and cover that as well. So I'm just taking the fabric and I'm going to cut it. I want it so that the fabric, um, you know, goes up over the sides. I'm going to be using this fabric cutter too, by the way, that's what I was showing you. <laughs> um, but you want your fabric to go up over the sides plus another like three inches or so. And of course I just eyeballed mine. I didn't measure it out. And then once you cut your fabric to size, you're going to take a ruler and you want from each corner, you want to measure out one inch like diagonally and do that on all four corners. And then I um, just traced the box just so when I put the box back, it's going to be in the right spot. <laughs> but I took the box off and then you want to take where you um, marked that one inch mark. You want to draw a line just like I did. So that basically you're going to be cutting the corners off. So you want to draw a line from each side to the mark that you made. You'll see here. I'm not explaining it really good, but... <laughs> So then you want to cut along those lines and this is what you're going to end up with. It looks like a little plus sign. So then you're going to um, cut a diagonal line where you made your uh, that one inch mark and see where I trace the box. You're going to cut right there until you reach, um, you know, where you had traced the box. Basically, this is going to make it so you have nice, neat um, folds when you cover the box. And this part isn't necessary. I just wanted the inside of the box to be really pretty. So I'm using um, that self-adhesive um, backing stuff. I got that at Goodwill a long time ago, and I just thought it would be really pretty in this box. And then I just covered um, all the inside of the box and the bottom part. This stuff is really easy to use. I don't know if it all is or if maybe because this was so old, but if I didn't get it in the right spot, I could just lift it really easy and place it in the right spot and it wasn't like tearing or anything. But these boxes are perfect for um, like organizing and storage and it makes it look really pretty. So if you have like open shelving, you can use it on there. So after I coated the inside of the box, 
I am taking some of this um, spray adhesive. This is from the Dollar Tree. I ended up switching to a different brand because this stuff just did not work. I don't know if it's because the um, canvas was so heavy, but it didn't hold. The fabric just kind of fell off. <laughs> I've had this work better for other projects, so I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it didn't work for this project. So I'm placing the box down where I had traced it right in the center. And then here is where I'm using the other adhesive spray. So you want to spray the fabric or the box, whatever you prefer, and start folding up um, the fabric on all the sides. And you are going to have some overlap. You'll see what I do here. I'm just spraying some of that adhesive spray and basically making a little, um, a little fold. So basically you're kind of like hemming it, I guess. <laughs> um, but it makes it so it's like really pretty and looks um, finished once you fold up the last two sides. So you want to do two sides opposite of each other and then do the end pieces just like this. I'm probably not explaining this very good, but you can see what I'm doing. And every time um, you lay the fabric down after you sprayed it, you just want to push out any wrinkles and bubbles just to make it look nice and clean. And see, I think it makes it look really nice when you fold in the edges like that. And I'm just making sure those sides are nice and stuck. <laughs> And as you can see right there where I had um, folded up the edges, I'd sprayed a little too much glue right there. I'll show you up close in a second. Make sure you don't do that because I don't think it dries clear. I mean, it dries clear, but you can still see it almost looks like a little stain right there. So make sure you're kind of light with the glue. But I'm still happy with how it turned out. I think it looks really pretty. I might even make some of these for my linen closet. For this next one, all you're going to need is a wood round. I got mine from, I think, Hobby Lobby and one of these light covers. I know a bunch of people call them boob lights. <laughs> um, you find a lot of them at thrift stores and stuff because they're just, I know a lot of people really, really do not like these. We have a couple up in our house still, but then you're going to need um, a washer and a screw. I'm using this dark walnut stain to um, stain the little wood round just because I thought it would look really pretty. You can do whatever you want. You can do antique wax, you can paint it, you can leave it raw. My um, stain here was really old and it was so thick. So it was going on like super thick and not even. So that one went in the garbage. <laughs> but this is what it looked like after it had dried. My husband had made a mark in the center for me. And I am just taking that light or the light cover and attaching it with the screw and the washer. Now I thought this would be pretty as like a fruit bowl or whatever, but I wasn't sure what actually was on the light and what would happen if, you know, the fruit or whatever covered or touched the screw and stuff. So I, I didn't do that. I guess you could put some sort of lining in there, but I thought it looked really pretty as a decorative bowl and just kind of cool because you could reuse this light or light cover. I keep saying that. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this one. For this next one, we are using um, little bottles. These are, a couple of them are wine bottles. Another one is one I got from the thrift store. You could really get them at any thrift store, but these are all the paints I'm going to be using. And basically we are going to be making them look like stone. And I love this. I got this from Home Depot. I just think it's really pretty. It has a ton of texture. So this one, I started by spraying the bottle first with the texture. And you could totally go over this with a couple coats and it would look really, really pretty. Sorry about the wind. 
Um, our weather started to get really nasty here as the day went on. You'll see that in a couple of my other projects. We actually ended up having a tornado warning. But anyway, this is what it looks like up close with just one coat. I think it's crazy how much texture it gives. So as that one was drying, I am using um, this reddish color. I think it's so pretty. This is this is actually one of my favorite reds. I am not usually a red person, but um, it's called Georgia Clay. But I think it's so pretty and so bright. It's like a orangey red. I think that's why I like it better than other reds. Um, but I'm also going to cover this with um, some of that textured spray because like I said, I want these to look kind of like stone covered. And then this is that one. I'm just going over it with a, a little bit darker brown. And then for this one, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a blue, but I ended up doing white and then adding a little bit of that texture over it. And then this is where I use that blue. This is like, I think it's called coastal blue. I did it on this um, vase that I was going to get rid of because I just, I hadn't used it, but I thought this would be perfect. So all of these, obviously I'm adding the texture too, just because I was having so much fun, but this is what it looks like over the blue. And I'm just going to add more blue over the texture. And I'm leaving all this painting in here because I know a bunch of you, when I asked you, said you love to see people paint. So I'm leaving this in here, but I'm also speeding it up, but feel free obviously to skip over this to see what they look like at the end. But this is what they look like um, with more of a matte finish. And then I ended up going over them with a um, clear gloss or like a glaze because I wanted them to look um, shiny, I guess. Because I have enough stuff in my house that I've painted with like the chalk paint and stuff. So it's all like got the matte finish, but I wanted it to be shiny. So I used this because they didn't have any glaze at Home Depot. But isn't this blue like super pretty? Oh, here my husband was showing you. It doesn't look as dark in the camera as it really was. Let me know what you think of those bottles. For this one, I am using these metal pieces and forgive me, I don't really know what they're called, but we had gotten these for my husband a few years back. He was going to do like make a stand for his razor and he was going to use these, but he never ended up using them. So they've been in my craft stash for a long time. So I thought, it would be perfect for a candle holder. I know that sounds weird, but, <laughs> um, and I tried to get this little piece off. My husband ended up um, really cranking on it for me to get it off because it was really stuck on there. But I put them together. I thought they would be really cool to use like the, um, the candle sticks in there. So I want to get a couple more because our, um, fireplace mantle it's not even really a mantle you can't call it that you'll see here in a minute it's really really narrow so not much fits on there except for like the really thin candlestick holders <laughs> but I wanted it to be um, more of like a coppery gold color so I'm using these acrylic paints by Arteza or Arteza I'm not really sure which way to say it but these are really nice metallic paints if you ever need to get some. So I just started with some gold and then just kind of layered um, each color on top. I first started using um, just regular brush strokes, but it was leaving, you know, a lot of the lines in there and that's not really what I was going for. So I just started dabbing it on and it gave more coverage and you didn't see the brush strokes. 
But this one was super easy and, you know, just using more trash. <laughs> I have a couple other trash to treasure videos. Well, I have a whole bunch, but ones that I've done recently, I will link those in the description box and also in the comment section, I will pin them. And um, if you're interested, I will link my all of my trash to treasure video playlist where it has everything I've ever done, pretty much trash to treasure. <laughs> so like I said, that one was super easy. Let me know what you think of that one. And you know, I always love hearing what you guys want to see in videos. So feel free to leave that in the comments. And this last one, we are using this, I don't know if it was a dowel rod or some handle or something, but it was attached to another piece of wood in our garage, but I just thought I would use it. And then I'm also using these wood rounds. Um, I think I got them from Arteza a long time ago. And also I'm using this antique wax and I'm just going to um, kind of go over all of them to give them more of like a vintage old look. And all I did was brush it on and then used a paper towel to blend it out. And I'm making one of those, um, what are they called? Spools? Because I have like so many different like um, twine rolls and ropes and stuff like that that never stay neat <laughs> in my containers and stuff. So I thought this would be super cute. I saw a picture of um, somebody that had made spools on Pinterest and I wanted to make almost like a giant size of them. <laughs> because it will help just keep my craft room more organized and it would look super cool. So after I was done with that, my husband drilled a hole in the dowel and, oh, it was freaking my cat out. <laughs> and also in the wood rounds, I would have done this myself, but you know, sometimes he likes to help. So I asked him if he would help me with this and please don't do it this way. I told him it wasn't a good way to do it, <laughs> but jokingly, he said he's an expert. So while I was doing this, the weather was getting really nasty. Actually, my son was out with his friends and ended up coming home early because we were under a tornado warning and it just went on, it seemed like, for hours. Um, so I was working on this as we were watching the weather and the news and stuff to know if we should go in the basement. But this is what it looks like, super rustic and I love it. This is probably one of my favorites that I've done today. And then I just took that um, twine roll that I was talking about that never stays together nice and neat and just wrapped it around. Oh, this is what I was talking about. Seemed like never ending sirens this night. <laughs> So then I just took the end of that twine or that rope and stuck it through there and it held it nice and neat. For this one, we are going to be doing a double frame and I am going to be reusing this card. My husband actually picked up this card thinking I could be, I could use it for a DIY. You're also going to use like an old t-shirt or old fabric, something that you would get rid of or donate and some Dollar Tree frames or whatever frames you have, maybe some that you were going to get rid of. And we are going to take the fabric of your choice. Mine is a little tank top that I was getting rid of, um, but I thought these would be perfect for um, photo mats because there's so many different colors that you have in t-shirts and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be perfect. So I am just cutting out the size I need and then tracing the size of the smaller frame so that, um, so that the frame sits on top of this mat and just overlaps it a little bit. So what I did was just cut on the very inside of the line that I traced. You don't want to cut on the line because then you'll probably see um, where you cut. So then I took the larger frame before I cut anything to make sure that um, I had enough fabric and I traced that as well because the, um, the fabric or the t-shirt, whatever, is fitting inside the larger frame. So here is where I'm cutting out um, where the smaller frame is going to be glued to the glass of the other frame 
if you know what I mean. <laughs> so for the larger frame, I am just taking out the glass because that's what we're going to need to glue the um, fabric mat to. And I'm just leaving the, um, the picture behind it so you can kind of see where the glass is because it's kind of hard to see. And I'm using this adhesive spray just because I didn't want the glue to soak through the fabric. And then you just place your fabric and you'll want to bring your frame to wherever you're doing this, your smaller frame, just so you can make sure that you're not going to see the edges of the, um, the fabric. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but <laughs> you get it. So I am taking that card that I was reusing and just taking the glass of the smaller frame so I could get um, the size that I needed and I cut that out. I didn't show show you only because I was really struggling with it and it was annoying to watch. And then I'm going to paint the frame, the smaller frame, the same color as the fabric I'm using because I thought that would be really cool. It would be really cool to use like like a floral t-shirt maybe or fabric or something as like a really unique matting behind the picture. And I just thought this card was really pretty and I thought it was cute that my husband picked it out mainly so that I could reuse it in a DIY. <laughs> So I just pop that into the smaller frame and don't worry, I'm going to add another coat of paint onto it. It looked kind of rough. <laughs> and then I am popping that glass and mat back into the larger frame. And you can go ahead and paint the larger frame too, the same color. That would look kind of cool. And then here I'm just using hot glue. I would definitely suggest using a more permanent bond if you want this to stay for a very long time or if you're hanging it up on a wall because you don't want it to come crashing down. So the reason I cut the hole in the middle of the matting is because I wanted the frame to have something to really hang on to, not just glue to the fabric. But this is what it looks like all finished. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Now this is obviously not everybody's going to have this. <laughs> this is something that probably should have been thrown in the trash, but it was a swing that my kids used to swing on that we had attached to um, our really big oak tree in the back, but that ended up um, actually dying and falling, which was really sad. <laughs> but I kept the swings just because those were some really sweet memories and I knew I could do something with it, but I've had it for quite a long time just floating around in the garage so I cleaned it up sanded it off and I'm going to add some of this antique wax and so today's video is more like not using like um, like bottles and cardboard and stuff like I did in my last video but more so like using stuff that you've had around the house that maybe you just probably should have gotten rid of but you knew there was a purpose for it and you could reuse it for something so that's the kind of trash we're redoing today. But I just thought this had really cool lines to it and it meant something to me. Might not mean something to somebody else and they might look at it and just be like, why do you have that chunk of wood? <laughs> but I thought it would be really pretty because I've seen like um, chunks of wood in antique stores and stuff and it's like, well, what is that used for? But you could use it for displaying anything kind of like I did here. I thought it was really pretty. I love the color and I just, I don't know, I smile when I look at it because it reminds me of my kids when they used to swing on it. So let me know, do you guys have anything floating around the house that's similar, that's something that somebody might just look at and be like, why did you keep that? But I don't know, you want to turn it into something cool so you can see it every day. So for this next one, sorry, I keep talking. You're going to need these um, dowel rods some rope and this is rope like I said little pieces of stuff I probably should have tossed but I knew I could um, change it up and repurpose it so this I'm just unraveling so that I actually have more rope to use because really that small a piece I couldn't think of anything to use it for so I'm turning it into three pieces of rope <laughs> 
And for this, you're also going to need some sort of um, wreath form. This is from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just taking that rope that I unraveled and I'm hot gluing it um, right to the edge, right there. And it's trying to fray on me, but we'll take care of that in a couple minutes. I need to get some of those, um, what are those fingertip things for when you're using hot glue? Because I constantly burn my fingertips. <laughs> What are those called? Let me know and let me know where you guys get them because soon here I'm not going to have any fingerprints. So anyway, I just wrap that around and just every once in a while I would um, put a little bit of hot glue just so I knew it wouldn't completely unravel if for some reason it ever started to one day. <laughs> and I went all the way around the smallest circle and then attached it the same way I did um, when we started where I wrapped it around and hot glued it. And then I started on the second row in and then just did this on the third row as well. And I found a few kind of like um, spread out the rope as you're twisting it instead of making it super tight, you get more use out of it. Like you get, um, it covers a wider section, I guess. <laughs> and then here we're going to use some twine just tie it onto uh, the bottom rung there. And this is where we're going to um, hide our starting and ending points. Just wrap it around a bunch of times. And this is also going to hide those little rungs that go the other direction. And I'll show you where I kind of screwed up um, up here when we are working with the dowel rods, but I wanted to leave it in there in case it gives somebody, um, you know, ideas of, how to change it up or make it look a little bit different because that's really all I want to do is just kind of give you like a base idea on how to use some of this trash or um, you know whatever you have lying around definitely don't have to do what I do but maybe it'll give you a little idea because I know when I watch DIY videos sometimes it's like I think of something completely different than what they're doing but their video helped me think of it so <laughs> So those dowel rods, I'm just taking this paint and um, like I said, originally I screwed up a little bit and I wanted to do all different colors. So I did this color brown and then I did this caramel color and then I left some of the dowel rods like the natural wood because in my head I thought it would look really cool. But then as I started working with it, I didn't like it. So after you have your dowel rods painted and they're dried, stick it through the wreath form just to get a gauge on how um, how tall you want the tallest pieces. This is going to be like a sun wreath type thing. You could do yellow. That would be really pretty too. But when you got it where you want it, just cut it because you're going to use the smaller piece that you just cut off as well. So see, we're not wasting any. <laughs> And then I just did that with all the colors that I spray painted. And then I just ended up, um, you'll see here, taking um, the dowel rods out and painting them all one color. But I wanted to leave this clip in here because my cat wanted to say hi, like always. So I just went ahead and cut them all. I cut um, all of them to have the bigger piece and the smaller piece. And just to give you an idea, that's what it looks like with all the colors. But then I got frustrated because I couldn't place them to where I thought they looked good. So I just painted them all one color and then placed them in here. And this actually holds it really, really tight, but um, maybe put a dab of glue onto the dowel rod so it actually is nice and secure onto the wreath. And I thought it was super pretty. Let me know what you guys think. I know it's a bit like coastal, but I don't know, kind of boho-ish too. I thought it was really pretty. And for this last one, I am using a stick. So if you have any out in your yard, go collect a couple. <laughs> and I just started peeling off some of the really loose bark so that it's not peeling off in the house. Then I'm taking a painting sponge and it's nice and wet and adding some white paint. If I were to do it again, I would use like a more creamy paint because I wanted it to be I wanted it to look like driftwood because I love anything coastal or driftwood-ish. <laughs> 
So I gave it a good coat with the wet sponge and then went back in with just a clean wet sponge and wiped some of it off so that it didn't look like just white paint on there. Then you're going to use some sort of rope or twine and I'll show you here in a second. I did a video last year that you guys really, really liked with a larger branch. I'll show you a clip of that and then I will link the video as well up in the right hand corner and in my description box. So for your rope, you're going to tie it at either end of the branch because this is how it's going to hang on your wall. There's the one that I did last year or the year before that you guys really, really liked. And then I did this part hanging up so that I could make sure that it was going to hang straight and um, all even. So then you're going to take, you can take um, just some thread or some twine like I did and we're going to do, you know, those um, hanging like eucalyptus branches or lavender. I think it's so pretty, but I'm just using faux um, branches. I thought it would look just as pretty and I'm just alternating between lavender and the eucalyptus. And that's it, super simple, but we used some more trash, some sticks here, and I think it turned out really, really pretty. And for not a lot of money. If you already had the greenery, then it's zero dollars. <laughs> if you're still with me, put a heart emoji into the comment section. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and join my YouTube family if you like what you are seeing in this video. I do a lot of videos that aren't Trash to Treasure as well. Also, I have a home channel. I will have all those listed in my description box. This was a DIY I had a lot of fun with. You're just going to need some twine, cardboard rolls, and some air dry clay or clay of your choice. I got this from Walmart. I'm going to be using the terracotta color and then eventually I ended up including some of the white. But I thought this was really cool. I had found some beads that I really liked on Pottery Barn's website and I looked it up to see how to make them and actually came across um, Jenna Pierce, I think is the name of her channel. She made some awesome, awesome clay beads so I will include that in my description box if you want to check hers out I'll show you a little clip here in a minute but I'm just taking the clay and using a spoon so I kind of get the same size it doesn't have to be perfect mine were not all identical sizes but I wanted around the same size so I just scooped out as many as I wanted I'm going to be adding more I think to my um, bead strand but I also wanted to add a little bit more, so I added twine around one of them, and I'm going to do that to a few more. So all you want to do, this stuff is really easy to work with. You roll it in a ball, and yes, the terracotta leaves color like crazy whatever it touches, so you don't want to, you know, be getting it on your clothes. I'm sure it washes out really easy. It washed off really well on my hands and the table I was working on. So I thought I could use the stain on my hands to kind of color the white clay so I'm just going to roll some of the white clay with the terracotta stain on my hands just to give it like kind of like the same hue as the terracotta but I didn't want it to be you know the dark terracotta color because I wanted to kind of alternate the beads and I think it turned out really cool So some of the other ones I just added in tiny pieces of the terracotta color so that it kind of gave it like a stone look or like um, marble. So I just put little pieces in and kind of stretched it out and then rolled it up and I think it looks really cool. And then I was just kind of playing around with it. So I rolled some out like little snakes, kind of like we did when we were younger and rolled them together. And you get even more of a marble effect that way. So then when I was happy with the amount of beads that I made or balls, I'm just taking a, it's like a skewer stick. Um, I ended up using a pencil, so you might want to start with a pencil because I wanted the whole 
in the beads to be fairly large because I really liked what Jenna had done in her video where she used um, multiple strands of um, twine to, you know, to hook them together. So basically I just did the same thing with the pencil, just stuck it in there and kind of moved it around so that the hole was big enough. And if you screw up like I just did, just reform the ball and poke the skewer stick or pencil through again. And then for the ones that I put twine around, I just took a little piece of twine and wrapped it around the opposite direction of the hole. And then you want to kind of like pull it so that it leaves like a really good indention so that you can kind of pinch the clay around the twine so it holds on to it as it dries. You could also do this and just take the twine off. That way you get um, um, like texture. There's so much you could do with this. I have some other ideas for using the air dry clay and this stuff from Walmart was super inexpensive. And here is a clip of um, Jenna's video. She did hers to look like concrete and I thought she did an awesome job. I might make a strand like that for my house. Not a video, but for decor in my house. So for mine, I am taking those cardboard rolls because this is a trash to treasure video <laughs> and I'm going to be making the tassels out of these. So I just took a toilet paper roll, cut it in half long ways and you want to flatten it out as much as you can because it'll be easier to cut that way. And I've seen people use these for um, garland and I thought they were really cool, but I wanted to use them with my beads. So I started cutting and I did a little bit larger strips. You don't want to cut all the way up. You want to leave them attached at the top. Um, but I started doing larger strips and then realized I wanted really, really thin ones to kind of mimic... Um, you know, what twine would look like or, you know, whatever you'd make a tassel out of. See, those are a little bit larger and then I ended up going smaller. And then I just um, laid out the toilet paper roll to kind of give me a measurement to, you know, where I wanted to cut the paper towel roll and then made another one. So for this next step, you don't have to do it, but I wanted to just give the tassels a little bit of color. So I am using these sprays. They're called um, Distressed Oxide Spray. I think they're really cool. I have another video coming out using these on another project. I think they're awesome. They're really fun to play with, but they are pretty messy. So you want to use a cloth when you shake them up because <laughs> they do drip. And they don't leave the color on these um, on the brown paper towel rolls as much as they do on regular paper. So if you want to see um, how to use them on regular paper, I will have that coming out soon. It's just really fun to play with. And then you can add some water and it like kind of pulls the color up again. I don't know. It's hard to explain. <laughs> so then I just flipped the little tassel things over again and sprayed them with water and then with the oxide spray again. And then to put the beads together, you want to let the clay dry for a day or two. I am using, um, I think it was eight strands of twine. And then you just loop it through. And I liked how, um, in her video, she had done knots in between each bead, so that's what I'm going to do because it looked awesome. And you want to leave a little bit at the ends because this is how we're going to attach the cardboard roll tassels. I'm sorry if you hear noise in the background. The whole family's home, so <laughs> everybody's kind of going about their day. So if you hear heard. If you hear weird noises, <laughs> that's what it is. So then you just keep adding the beads in the pattern that you want. So I didn't um, cut a long enough piece, so this is an easy fix. So I just cut a, 
you know, a pretty long piece or eight pieces and you just knot it at the last bead that you did kind of to make it look like the other knots and then cut off the excess and put a little bit of hot glue on there just so the knot holds on to the original um, pieces of twine that you used and then cut off the bottom of the first strand of twine that you use so that you can't see it and then add a little bit of hot glue there as well and then you just start threading again and you can't even tell that you added a new strand of twine and the length of the twine depends on how long you want your um, your garland to be so this is what it looks like with the paper towel tassels I think it looks kind of cool and you can squish it and bunch it and make it as thick and fluffy as you would like so to attach it you're just going to use that excess that we left at the ends and you're going to take your paper towel roll and just roll it as tight as you can but you want to leave a hole in the center I'll show you in a second right there you want to leave that hole that's why I'm going to leave this um, skewer rod in there while I wrap the twine around the top part of the cardboard and you want to start the twine right at the very end of where you started cutting or finished cutting <laughs> and then just wrap it around don't go all the way up because we're going to cut off a bunch of that And when you start wrapping the twine, you want to leave the piece out that you originally started with so that you can tie the end of the twine to that one so that it's nice and secure and you can add a drop of glue if you'd like. So you still want to leave that hole, but you're going to cut off the excess. It's a little bit hard. It's thick. <laughs> there's the hole so then you're going to take your extra twine at the end of your garland piece and I had to tape mine because it was a little bit too thick for the hole that I left and this is just so that you can feed it through a lot easier and then just push it through the hole in the cardboard and then <laughs> Flip it over until you can see the twine and pull it through. You're not going to hurt the cardboard pieces, so don't worry about pushing them aside. So pull it through and then secure it in the middle with some glue. You don't want a lot because you don't want your cardboard pieces to stick together. <laughs> but let that dry and then cut off the extra. And then smooth out your tassels so it doesn't look all wonky. <laughs> And add a little bit more glue and wrap some twine around the um, the original twine from the garland around the cardboard and the bunch of twine that you already wrapped and fluff up your garland or your tassel and it's all done I think it looks kind of cool I like that um, we added some of the spray just to give it some extra color and I think it looks awesome with the terracotta color I'm really liking like the burnt oranges and terracotta colors. So let me know what you guys think of this project. Also, let me know in the comment section what your favorite DIY channel is to watch or DIY channels and like decorating channels. I love to hear new ones that maybe I haven't seen before or I watch a lot of them, so I'm sure we watch and are interested in the same ones. For this next one, I just took two Dollar Tree frames and took the glass out of one because I've been seeing those frames um, where they don't have a back really it's just the glass and where they put um, like leaves and twigs and stuff in between or flowers in between the glass and I think it looks really pretty and just super simple so I'm just taking these dried hydrangea leaves and just pinched them 
in between the glass and added a little bit of hot glue so that it held you know with the little tabs that were already on there and then just added it to this little wood piece that I've had for a long time and I've used it for a lot of DIYs. And finally, this last one, super simple. I saw it on the Pottery Barn website. It's just this little basket and I'm using one of those like paper plate baskets. I think that's what they're for. <laughs> and of course my favorite brown paints, but you can use any color that you want. And I wanted to just darken up the, um, the basket a little bit to look more like the picture. I did notice after this original video went up that Liz Fenwick did one shortly after. She did hers a lot different than I did. Um, it turned out really similar, but she used different products, so be sure to check hers out. It turned out really, really pretty. I'll have her channel linked in my description box if you don't know who she is, but I'm sure you do because she does some awesome DIYs. And I just layered on the colors until I was happy with it and then took a Sharpie and looked at the picture again. I just wanted to see how the leaves were on the flower. And it looks like they did like the base of the flower first and then maybe added, you know, those four um, petals in the back. And I wanted to do it with a Sharpie first because I have better control than with a paintbrush. And then I went over it with this black paint. And like I said, super simple. And it was a basket that I wasn't going to be using anymore. So I just gave it a second life. Well, thank you so much for sticking around till the very end. I hope you liked these um, trash to treasure DIYs as much as I did. Like I said, I put them in this compilation video because they were my favorites, but if you have other ones that you've seen on my channel, let me know which ones you like the best and which ones you like the best out of this video. As always, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for all your love and support and all your sweet comments. I know I don't get to them all, but I really appreciate all of you and just love you so much. And if you're a new subscriber, I hope you stick around and I hope you like what you saw. Don't forget to leave me your video ideas in the comment section and I hope you are having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye!